And I believe God has given me a word, and to those you sharing on television, we're moving forward into new heights of service to the Lord here at Victory in our brand new capital campaign to pave our rear lot and build much needed multi-purpose room and continue to minister to the people of God. Jesus was all about ministry. In Luke, the fifth chapter, we're at the very beginning of, of Jesus' ministry. And I'm reading, one day as Jesus was standing by the lake of Genezareth, the people were crowding around him and listening to the word of God. He saw at the water's edge two boats left there by the fishermen who were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little from shore. Then he sat down and taught the people from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into deep water and let down the nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we've worked hard all night and haven't caught anything. But because you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so full that they began to sink. Increase. When Simon Peter saw this, he fell at Jesus' knees and said, Go away from me, Lord. I'm a sinful man. For he and all his companions companions were astonished at the catch of fish they had taken. And so were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, Simon's partners. Then Jesus said to Simon, don't be afraid. From now on, you'll be fishing for people. You'll be fishers of men. So they pulled their boats up on shore, left everything, and followed him. And all the people of God and watching on television said, Amen. and my subject is making a total commitment. My text verses give us the third and final call to Jesus, to his disciples, to commit and follow him totally and completely. The, the first call occurs in Luke, the first chapter, verse 37, that after... John declared Jesus to be the Lamb of God. The two disciples, James, John, they heard this and they followed Jesus. Jesus didn't ask them to follow. They followed once they knew who he was. Mm -hmm. Obviously, it wasn't a total commitment because we find in Matthew chapter 4, Jesus coming back to them again. And in Matthew chapter 4, Four, verses 18 through 20, as Jesus was walking beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon called Peter, his brother Andrew. They were casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. Come, follow me, Jesus said, and I will send you out to fish for people. At once they left their nets and followed him. The first time they followed on their own. Jesus didn't ask them to follow. The second time, Jesus asked them to follow. And obviously, they still had not made a total commitment because we find them in my text verses once again. But this third time will be the last and final time of following Jesus and leaving all. So my daddy had a lot of issues. I own that. But one thing that brother believed in was working. And he had an incredibly strong work ethic, supporting his wife and seven kids. We in a day and age where young men, teenagers, 20, some in their 30s, one of the criteria for them to date a woman is, you know, is she going to work? Because they ain't going to work. Now, sisters, if a brother tell you up front he ain't working, you supporting him. (laughs) 
Need I say more? Well, Pastor, I got needs. Well, everybody got needs. Everybody got needs. You see, brothers and sisters, these were highly trained and experienced fishermen. They understood if they want to eat, they got to go to work. You too. You, you want to eat? Better go to work. You see, brothers and sisters, we live in the age of commitment. Listen carefully. We live in the age of entitlement without commitment. It's straight from the Lord. Entitlement without commitment. A generation of people who want the best life has to offer with no strings attached. Living together without marriage, without commitment, talking about friends with benefits. Marriage, as soon as it gets tough, they want out. Sometimes I'm crushed in my office when I listen to what couples are going through and realize they have no biblical basis for divorce. None. Ain't nobody cheating. Ain't nobody being abused. It's just that marriage is hard. Well, somebody say, what am I supposed to do? Stay married. Well, I didn't sign up for this. Yes, you did. I did the ceremony. <laughs> you said for, for richer or for poor or for better or for worse and sickness and to hell. Whoa, 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 whoa. I'm going to start speaking in tongues. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, I, 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 I don't really, really mean that. But why you say it? You shouldn't say what you don't mean. You want high wages. You don't want to climb the long, steep ladder of success. And some of you who are making those big bucks, now your grit and resolve is being tested to see if you can, with the help of God, pull yourself back together and get up to where God once had you. Just because you went down in your wage, just because you lost your job during the recession, God didn't make you so that the recession determines your future. God made you to make it through whatever test, whatever trial, whatever circumstance with faith and trust in him. And it is when you're down that you must learn how to call on the Lord and say, if the Lord took me up, and brought me back down, then the Lord can take me up again. I have faith in the Lord. Even in church, we got entitlement without commitment. I ain't going to talk too much about y'all because y'all write letters. <laughs> but we have you in these churches here today. You come and don't join. What that about? <laughs> Been here five years. Well, uh, I'm thinking about it. Well, what you got to think about? You, you don't go nowhere else? All right, all right. You see, there comes a time when you have to commit. Because sometimes God holds back on you because you don't commit. God said, then why should I commit to you? There comes a time when you got to say you in or you out. And then got the nerve to want great services. Now, I don't mind you complaining if you're a member, but don't be complaining and you're a guest and gave a sacrificial offering of $5. Don't you be complaining. I used to be a cost accountant. I can about figure out you ain't even paid for the air that's falling down on your seat. Tell your neighbor, it don't work that way. It don't work in life, the concept of entitlement without commitment. It does not work. Everything you achieve in life, you have to have a sense of commitment. And commitment is proven when the going gets tough and you hang on in there. Some of you want to hear the Lord say, well done. Well, what you do? I'm waiting for him to say, well done, good and faithful servant. Well, what did you, where you serve? Where you at? What's on your spiritual resume when you get to heaven? When God looks at it and, and all you did was warm a seat. 
You see, commitment does not make you perfect, but it makes you loyal and determined to finish what you start. All of Jesus' disciples are fishers, not just the ones in my text, but all of us are fishers. Jesus' disciples are fishers. The world is the sea. Eternal life is the shore to which we bring the catch of fish to. All believers must learn, like Peter is about to, that we can do nothing without Jesus. Yes, Peter, you're insulted. The son of a carpenter is telling expert fishermen how to fish. Clearly, the carpenter knows nothing about fishing. Well, what do you mean? Well, the first thing he tells us, says Peter, is go back out in the daytime. That's ridiculous. Fishing is best done at night, pre-dawn. The next ridiculous thing is it, to now go and, and in the day fish. These are fish, but they're not stupid fish. If we throw the net out, they, ain't gonna, they see the net coming. They ain't going to get caught when, when they see the net. Just try to catch the fish in your aquarium with your little net. You're all day trying to get them. When you see the net, you run. Not only that. You said go out into the deep, and that's real dumb. Because, see, you need day nets to do those, that kind of fishing. We got night nets. The night nets are meant for shallow water fishing. person with night nets goes to a shallow area, and in that shallow area, they throw the net out, and because the water is shallow, then the fish are caught underneath, and then they can pull them in. But ladies and gentlemen, when the water is deep, how that's going to work? And so it is crystal clear in Peter's mind, Jesus don't know what he's talking about. But I challenge Peter, and I challenge you under the sound of my voice here today, Peter, with all of your expecting, don't forget, you're the expert, best fisherman in the land. You worked hard all night, but you caught nothing, man. <laughs> you don't have nothing to show for having worked hard all night. Brothers and sisters, some of you work hard. And you will agree with me, there's nothing like working hard and not having anything to show for it. There's nothing like working hard and living from paycheck to pay. I'm going to get me some witnesses up in there. There's nothing like working hard and living from paycheck to paycheck to paycheck. It gets frustrating. Somebody say, how do you know? Because I've been there. It ain't far from there now. Barely got enough to pay bills. Barely got enough to take care of the family. Years ago, during our unemployment, it wasn't just my two years of unemployment. I was unemployed two years, uh, got back to work. The next five years, my wife was unemployed, going back to school, trying to raise kids. I know how to spell broke. And I knew, I'm telling you, I'm just being honest about it. Even during all of that time, we never miss paying our tithes. I, I don't put my faith on you. I'm not trying to say I'm a great faith. I'm telling you what I did. In my mind, if God, if I need God to bless me, I must first obey him. And I learned when my broke behind to write that tithe check first, put it in. So how you going to make it? I don't know. But I'm going to tell you something. All these years later, made it. Made it. Can't explain it to you. But I know one thing. I made it, and I know this. God is faithful. When you work hard and have nothing to show for it, it drives you crazy. 
But I want you to know all believers must understand this principle. And it's found in 1 Corinthians 3, verses 6 to 7. You may plant the seed. Another may water it. But in 1 Corinthians 3, 6, and 7, we are told that only God can give the increase. Lord, increase my territory. Do everything you're supposed to do. Do everything you can do. But in the end, it's not your PhD. It's not your master's degree. It's not how smart you are. It's not how strong you are. It's about the Lord gave you increase. And if he gave the increase, then he deserves the glory, the honor, and the praise. As Peter obeys the Lord, look at the increase in verses 6 and 7. When Simon Peter saw this, he fell at Jesus' knees and said, Go away from me, Lord. I'm a sinful man. For he and all his companions were astonished at the catch of fish they had taken. So were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, Simon's partners. Stay with me a moment. Almost done. Now you get it. Now you get it. Now you get it. Peter, no word from Jesus is devoid of the power to accomplish the task. I don't care how ridiculous it is that what God says to you, it's not about what is said, it's about who said it. If God tells you he's going to bless you, then can't nobody stop you from being blessed. If God say he's going to heal you, can't nobody stop you from being healed. It's about who said it. In this same chapter, ladies and gentlemen, same chapter, a man with a leprosy. Jesus just said, be clean. And immediately he was healed. Same chapter, a paralytic. Jesus said, your sins are forgiven. And people, the scholars of that day, the scribes and Pharisees, how you know? Can't see sins forgiven. Well, since y'all don't believe me, and Jesus said, well, what's easier for me to say your sins are forgiven or, or take up your bed and walk, but that you may know that the Son of Man has power. I say to the man, take up your bed and walk. Well, well what, what could he do but take up his bed and walk? Because Jesus doesn't tell you anything and not come with the power to get it done. Mary Magdalene, seven demons cast out of her and they didn't even get a 30-day eviction notice. Jesus said, come out, you're out. Some of you here today have survived some of the deepest stuff that a person can imagine. It's Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Let those who Jesus told you in your spirit, you will be healed. That your story is not over. That you will see your grandchildren. That you're going to be all right. Let me see somebody shout it out. Jesus spoke. Get these people. Look at them. These are miracles. These are gift miracles. They don't know how it got done because the doctor told them it couldn't be done. But I don't care what the doctors say. I'll listen. I'll respect their professionalism. But they are not the great physician. There is a physician that made me. The doctor didn't make me. Jesus made me. Jesus knows me better than any doctor. He knows what holds me together. So when the doctor says no, Jesus says yes. You tell me who wins. The word of God. Some of you under the sound of my voice, Jesus spoke to you and told you in the midst of unemployment that you're going to make it. He told you you were going to get another job. Some of you, the best thing that ever happened to you was unemployment. There are people here today are millionaires because they lost their job. You see, brothers and sisters, there is stuff down in you that you don't even know you've got. 
until you've got to use it. There's stuff down in you that as long as you're not challenged, as long as you don't have to go through nothing, it'll just sit there dormant. But when you go through your test and trial, Jesus causes the gifts that he already put down in you to come to the surface. Some of you were unemployed during the Depression. You unemployed today. I'm going to tell the whole truth. I have members in here who tell me, Pastor Singleton, I was a nervous wreck. But I'm here to tell you, God's been good to me. Throughout this whole time, I have not lacked one meal. I got food on my table. I have clothes on my back. I have roots and shelter over my head. Tell your neighbor, that's a gift miracle. Give them praise up in this house. Jesus spoke a word to some of you under the sound of my voice. Some of you have had kids. I'm almost done. But I want to speak into your life. Some of you have had kids that have brought you to your knees. You've had kids that you've done everything you know to do. And they're still in jail. They're still in trouble. And the devil told you they ain't going to make it. But there was something inside of you that kept speaking, saying, stay on your knees. Don't give up on your child. Keep praying for your child. And in the midst of seeing absolutely nothing, just because Jesus spoke it, you believe it. And some of these kids today got their bachelor's degree, got their master's degree, because it took that for them to acknowledge who the real master is. And the greatest miracle of all, Jesus spoke the word and saved souls. Spoke to dark sinners and said, when you repent of your sin, I'll give you the Holy Spirit. As I close, like Peter, when we doubt Jesus, we feel ashamed. I've been there. I'm not going to knock Peter because I've been there. Note what he says. The Bible says, when Peter saw this, he fell at Jesus. Needs and said, go away from him, a sinful man. Of course, they were all astonished. But I want you to know the B portion. He said, then Jesus said to Simon, don't be afraid. From now on, you'll catch people. He had told Jesus, get away from me. I'm a sinful man. The miracle is in his own boat with his own nets and concerning his own business. And Jesus responds, don't be afraid. From now on, you'll catch people. And they left everything and followed him. You see, when God speaks to your heart about what he's going to do, because see, Peter did this in a halfway, oh, fine, I ain't caught nothing all night. We really ain't going to catch nothing. But Jesus said, fine. And the next thing you know, the miracle of the fish. He just wanted enough to live on. The boats almost sank. Because there's something you need to grasp as this message is. See, God is able not only to prosper you, and I'm speaking in the spirit to someone now, but I hear the word of God saying to me, he, to you, he is able to do exceeding and abundantly above all that you can ask or even think according to his riches in Christ. See, while you thinking on such a low, superficial level, God's got a blessing for you so great so long, so heavy, you can't even pull the blessing in. He's blessed your family. He's blessed your children. He's blessed your grandchildren. He's blessed your health. He's blessed your coming in. He's blessed your going out. Don't hold back on God. He's got a blessing. He's got a blessing for you. Tell your neighbor, don't doubt him. Don't doubt him. He done already spoke the word. 
As I end this message, from here on out, I feel like shouting too. From here on out, they have a total commitment. You see, there's a difference between being involved and being committed. There's a difference between making a contribution and being committed. One of the best examples of that is the story of a chicken and pig passing a church. And they wanted to, to, wanted to know, what can we do to help the poor? So the, so the chicken said, I know. We'll give them bacon and eggs. <laughs> so the pig was hesitant. Chicken said, what's the problem? He said, well, for you. <laughs> you, you making a contribution. You just being involved. But for me, this is a total commitment. This is a total sacrifice. I got to give my life for this bacon to be on the plate. And while you laugh, don't forget Jesus gave his life. It was a total commitment to save your soul. And the only reason you and I are going to heaven is because Jesus gave his life. He didn't just make a contribution. He gave his life. He made a total commitment. And because of that total commitment, you can eat bacon and eggs. Because of that total commitment, you know that you're going to heaven. Thank you for joining us today. And we look forward to worshiping with you at either our 9 a.m. or 11.30 a.m. Sunday services that are biblically based, illustrative, contemporary, and timely. Our services cater to men, women, the young, and young at heart. We also invite you to join us for Tuesday night Bible study at 7.45 p.m. and lunch on the Word on Wednesdays at noon. We are so thankful for your continued support of this ministry. And if this excerpt from our service touched your heart to either give financially to the ministry or to purchase the entire worship service on either CD or DVD, please call 708-283-0383 or visit us online at www.victoryapostolicchurch.org. 